Welcome back to my next Godot tutorial. In this Godot tutorial, Unseen C says, is there a way I can do this for a 3D game? He's referring to this random scene instance in position, which I made, showing you how to randomly instance in 2D. So in Unseen C, would like to know, is there a way to do this for a 3D game? And then I replied and I thought, yeah, Knee-jerk reaction is like, yeah, it's easy. Y'all using Vector 2, Vector 3. But I got to thinking, well, maybe it's not quite so easy. So, I have dusted off my Godot engine. Thank you, Unseen C. I've been, I've been having the, that little bug come in and where I wanted to do some more Godot stuff. So, it gives me a good excuse. So, I've made a 3D scene here. I have my control node. In that control node, I have added the instance of a floor. Here's my floor. All it is is a mesh, in, mesh instance, a static body, and a collision shape. And then I have my camera. So if I run this, that's all you see. That's it. I did make a ball scene. Uh, that's a rigid body. And then mesh instance of a ball. I've set scale at 0.5 on everything. Collision shape at a 0.5. Timer node. So that when the timer goes off, it comes up in here and sets Q free. I've done that on all of these. That very same thing. Same thing with the square rigid body. Uh, did the transform it. Oh did the transform on that 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 on the rigid body of all three of these ball square cylinder I came in here and changed the physics material and I gave it a bounce of 0 0.5 on all three of those and on the cylinder the only thing I've left to do show you how to do it I'm going to attach a script to that scene I'm going to add a child node timer create set the timer for 10 seconds which is what I did on the others one shot auto start on node timeout connect to that rigid body and then right here just set Q free and in 10 seconds all of them start disappearing I've done that on all three of them so now we need to come into the control node and start programming our script. So we're going to set everything on, on location, where we're setting the location. We're going to set everything as location. So I'm going to create a variable and call it location. That's going to be a vector 3. We're going to preload and we're going to call that preload a packed scene so we're going to set a variable and we're going to call that packed scene hit that little gadget there and then we're going to preload open that up yeah it's a uh, preload uh, variable has to equal something so it's complaining that we're not equal equaling it to something oops so preload ball tscn after that make sure you hit the comma preload uh, no not square gd square tscn okay comma Preload and then cylinder. I'm going to take this line out because it's not needed. All right, that should take care of that. We have no errors, so we'll continue. Want to do this in delta, so we want it to happen fast, fast and furious. So we're going to function underscore process delta we're going to randomize I'm 
we're gonna randomize we're going to just randomize a variable just a standard x variable so we'll, we'll set variable with var x equals randi and modulus packed scene dot size awesome so all that does is our packed scene size is three and it's going to randomize between those three that's all that does we're going to with our variable location of vector three we're going to we're going to set location x it's going to be is going to equal random range rand range and that random range and we're going to take that random range from our floor uh, right here okay right here i made the floor 15 wide by 15 deep so it's a 15 by 15 floor so I want my randomize to be inside of that. And, and that's, the, the center is zero. So it's minus 15 this way, plus 15 that way. So it's technically it's 30 wide and 30 deep. But since zero is the center, you want to do minus 15 this way and then to 15 that way and then minus 15 this way to 15 that way so we're going to do random range of minus 15 comma 15 it's just going to find a random number in between minus 15 and 15 that's all and then we're going to do that again for well actually yeah we'll do that again location z z that way is wide i think x and z are that way y is how high in the world it, it is so we'll do that one in a minute so z rand range also minus 15 to 15 and then now our height which is y so we're just going to do a random height. I don't know. Rand. Just make up a number. Rand range. From 5 high to 20 high. How about that? If you do anything below zero, it's going to be underneath your floor. And if you do zero, it's going to be in your floor. So you want to make sure, and my floor is only one high. So I want to make sure that it's higher than that. So I'm going to go 5 and then 20. Some of those will be high enough to get a good fall and do a lot of bouncing. Okay, get on the outside of that. Now we're going to create a new variable, and we're going to call that a scene. Why not? Because you're taking your packed scene and you're turning it into an active scene. You could call it active scene. Uh, packed scene becomes a scene once it's loaded. So I'm just going to call it scene. It's going to equal the packed scene of X. That box I can't remember what that's called not parentheses but the square parentheses I can't remember what that's called but that's uh I can't remember what that's called what that does is it's it the scene is equaling the packed scene with the number x from this randomization so if scene equals packed x one then it's going to be the scene is going to equal the ball anyway and dot instance scene dot set let's get some 
some of that going so I can see what I'm doing here. All right. So this is where we set the position. And in uh, 2D, this, the position is set is with scene dot position vector 2. But in 3D, it's scene set translation. Set translation. And then location. This would have to set set translation has to be a vector three, but we're we're creating a vector three with location. So all you have to do is put location in there, and it reads that location variable as a vector three. Last but not least, add child scene the scene that you just made. This should work. Let's see what happens. Awesome. I'm just going to let that run for a few minutes. I appreciate you watching. Appreciate being asked about doing this as a 3D and kind of dusting off my Godot skills. Yeah, I'm rusty. I gotta, I gotta do some. I've been doing too much and too many embroidery patterns in Inkscape, Ink Stitch. But this is cool. Thank you for watching, and until next time, that's it.